Hey guys, Cajun CEO here with some intro videos to Squad. I am part of BMK, Bismarck Gaming, community that I started about a year, year and a half ago. And we've got a couple of BMK guys with us today to help go over the training video and how to get started with Squad. A lot of this is going to be for first time players, people who are interested in the game and want to get started quickly. We're going to go over a handful of items on just very, very basics intro, how to join a squad, how to get moving, how to do call outs, and also just getting an idea of how the game works on a very basic level. Some of the next videos that we're going to be bringing you will be on weapon classes, the difference in factions, how to squad lead, effective troop movements, and vehicle movements, gameplay. So when you start the game, you're going to land on this page here. We're going to go ahead and switch to just our basic full screen. So in here, you've got server browser and custom servers. Server browser is all of the licensed servers. So these are official servers licensed by OWI, Off World Industries, who makes the game. In here, under players, this column here, you can see all of the, all of the servers Basically, the first number is how many players are currently on the server, and then the second number is how many players that server can house. So, 80 player server is the max. And then, you'll see here we've got 77 plus 4 slash 78. That means they have four people in queue right now and 77 active players. Now, the reason why it's not 78 is because they have one reserve slot set up for that server. So if you are set on their whitelist, you are able to get in. They only, only have one position set up for that. As a spot opens on the server, general population, that reserve slot will move into general population and free up that reserve slot. If you don't have a reserve slot, that plus four means you are going to be fifth in queue when you select that server. Now, there are benefits and downfalls to this. The benefit is, you know, it's a fully populated server. You're going to have the, I would say, probably your best experience on a fully populated server because you've got the most amount of players available to you. But that does mean you're going to have to wait in line. Some of these queues can be pretty quick. Some of these queues can be very long. One of our more popular servers you have, you may have queues, you know, this one's got five, this one's got six, So it all just kind of depends on the popularity of the server. That does usually mean you're going to have a lot more active players, better players, and you probably will have a better experience with one of these servers. Now, the next column over here is the health of the server. So most servers are going to stay within green, but we've got yellow. Now that's an 80 player server that they have 80 players and three in queue. So their reserve slot's also full. And they basically maxed out their server. So it's kind of expected that it might drop into yellow. You want to stay away from servers that are in red. You're going to just have a really bad performance experience. The next column over is server ping. So this is going to be different for everybody. This depends on where you are playing from and what server you are connecting to. The lower the number, the better performance generally you're going to get on that server. And then we have custom servers. Now within custom servers, this is all of the non-licensed servers. So this is where you will find modded servers, uh, servers with different rule sets, servers that are designed for potentially uh, certain groups of people. We're going to be on a custom server for our recording session today. All right, so once you've selected which server you would like to join, you just double click it. You'll get this pop up down here that will give you position and queue. So, again, if you are in queue, this will give you, you know, four out of five in queue. And then once you join, you're going to move to this black screen. Now, in this screen, this will give you the keyboard layout and all of the keys that correspond to this keyboard layout. Take some time to study this. One of the most important things about this game is never, ever, ever, ever Alt-Tab on this screen. It will end badly 100% of the time. The game will crash. You will have to either go into Task Manager and end tasks for the game. If you're running on a single monitor, you won't even be able to do that. You'll have to restart your computer. So, 
very important. Just read the screen. Don't touch any keys on that on that section. <laughs> um, so once we get into the server, we'll have the ability to select which faction we want to play. Now, from this menu, if you play with friends and you play with people that you're you usually play with, you can hold down tab, and this will bring up both sides of who's on what team and you can look for your friends and try to join that team now right now it has this on the militia faction we can click continue to join or i can go over, go over here and click to join for the american side now we're going to join the american side because as you can see everybody we all of our friends are on the other side they're on the american team now sometimes you will have a balance an imbalanced team so if you click here they click to join you're going to get a little message that says team or teams are imbalanced you cannot switch teams currently there is a three person differential between the teams if one team is at 40 you're never going to be able to join over to that team because that team is maxed out again this is an 80 player server max so you won't you won't be able to switch over uh if it's 24 to 23 you won't be able to switch or you will be able to switch but if it's 24 to 30 you won't be able to switch because of that differential so keep that in mind whenever you're trying to switch faction once you've selected which faction you would like to join you can go ahead and click continue in here is where we're gonna look at selecting a squad now up here we have a squad that has a little button to join that means we can join that squad it's available it has two of nine players in that squad right underneath it we have a locked squad this means we cannot join we can only join by invite if we know the individual or the individual is trying to get more people into the squad we're going to join the open squad just click to join this will get us into this weapon selection menu so once you're in a squad You'll be able to select your weapon class right now we have all weapon classes unlocked this will not be the case when you join a squad we just have a couple of admin overrides so that we can showcase everything so at the beginning you have the ability to choose medic from the rifleman class you have three different rifles now this will change depending on which faction and we will get into that in another video when we talk more in detail about different factions and different weapon classes but from here we've got three one of the key things I want to point out is some of these will have drop down menus and some of them will not. In the support class, which is the bottom row here, you can only have three members of your squad when you have a full squad as part of the support class. So you've got the automatic rifleman, the grenadier, the heavy machine gunner, marksman, the lat. So again, some factions will have a drop down for lat, which you can choose two different types of lat, and then we have the hat. So lat is light anti tank. Hat is heavy anti tank. And then you have the crewman kit, which will allow you to crew certain types of vehicles, will require the crewman kit to either drive or gun those vehicles. The medic class is a great class to choose when you're first starting out. This will allow you to have a nice red dot rifle for the Americans. It will also allow you to hang back a little bit, get familiar with the game, get familiar with troop movements and how your squad leader is squad leading. You'll also be able to help out your squad by healing them and picking them up whenever they go down. We'll go over that more when we get into all the different classes and weapon classes in another video. So this screen is called your deployment window. In your deployment window, you have a handful of different options. We have deploy tab, which will allow you to select your weapon classes, your squads, enter and leave a squad. We have the role layout. This is a bit different. This gives you a little more information about what role you have selected, what options you have, <clears throat> and you can select through and take a look at all of the different kits, what they have available to them. On the team selection menu, if you wanted to change teams midway through a match, this is where it will allow you to change your team. Deploy menu is most of the time where you're going to be and where you're going to set up. Now, we're going to look at the different spawn points that you have available to you. So we have main spawn, which will have this little icon, and it will be where your main, you know, we have U.S. main with the locked icon on it. That means only the U.S. can spawn here. This is the only location that we can spawn uh, vehicles from as well, and this is usually where you'll come back to repair or rearm vehicles, unless you have a mobile repair station down 
add a file, which we'll talk about in a later video. The other two options that we have available to us are rallies, which is this little flag. The number one means that we are in squad one. That flag will have whatever squad number that your squad is. So if we were in squad two with Omega, it would have a two on there. The third option is the hab. This is a spawn point for all of our team to spawn at within our fob, so our forward operating base. This will allow the rest of the team to spawn at an advanced location and get to the front line a lot faster. Or it will be placed in a backup location if we need to fall back to secure point. When you click on one of these spawn points, you're going to get this menu here, and you'll have a wave timer set up with how many seconds are remaining to spawn in. You must click confirm to get in on the wave. We'll click confirm and spawn on the rally in two seconds. Once we are in, we have the ability to go back to the deployment menu by pressing enter. This will give us all of the information that we had before and access to look at what kits are available. Now, from here, because I am spawned in, I will not be able to select or change kits at this point. We have to be dead or at a weapon crate to be able to change kits. Let's talk a little bit about the different chat keys and voice keys. So within game, we can chat with everybody, with our team, or with just squad. J will open up a chat to all. You can see at the bottom of the screen, we have chat to all. We can say, you know, hello all. This will show up in blue signifying, and then all at the very beginning signifying that we are chatting to everybody. K will chat to team. Again, we'll have the team designation, and it is in blue again. This, seem, this means we are chatting only within our team, and no one from the other team can see the chat. Now, L will be squad only, and it will show up in green. And also have the designation for squad. This is only the nine people that, were, that are within our squad will be able to see this, and that's it. So this gives you the ability, if you're under heavy fire, things are too loud, you cannot hear comms, um, you've got just a lot going on, your squad lead may not be able to hear you, you can use squad chat to communicate to your squad or team chat to communicate to your team if your squad leader is not able to effectively communicate to the other team members. That way, hey, enemy movement, um, you may be able to set down if you're... If you're um, Find a mine, you may be able to say, hey, there's a mine on the road, leaving main, watch out for these mines. You can put that in team chat so that everybody on the team has a chance to read it. The other comms that we have are squad voice comms and local comms. So B will talk in squad chat. And you can see at the bottom, we've got green squad radio. Only the members within your squad will be able to hear you. And they will be able to hear you wherever you are on the map. V will do local chat. Everybody within about a 30 meter range will be able to hear you. Some of that will depend on where they have their volume settings for local chat and, and a few things like that. But for the most part, within 30 meters, you should be able to hear the individuals talking to you. And that's anyone that's on your team. There is no way for you to communicate in voice chat to anybody on the other team. You can only do that through text chat via the J button. At the beginning of every match, when you spawn in at, the, at main, you're going to get a starting phase. The starting phase will end in two minutes. You'll have a countdown. During this phase, squad leaders will be coordinating where each squad will go on the map and where your squad needs to be, which vehicles they need to get into, and which kits you need to, you need to have. Sometimes you'll have the SLs call out for, I need max lat. That will be the two or three lats for your support class will all need to grab lats and then get into a vehicle. Typically, you will all spawn in. You will grab either a Lodgy, a transport, or an armor vehicle. So when you join into a squad, your squad lead is most likely going to ask you to hop into a truck. Now, the difference between the different trucks is pretty easy to tell on the map. The Lodgy truck, the logistics truck, has got the icons, the little ammo icons, the three slashes on the back of the truck versus the transport truck has none. You can see a couple of the other different technicals here. They have different icons on them as well. And then 
your squad will always be green. So if my squad, a member or squad lead is in a truck, that truck will turn green. If another squad is in a different vehicle, that vehicle will turn blue, signifying that the blue berry is what we normally refer to them, a blueberry, because it's a little blue dot on the screen, is in a different vehicle. Easiest way to identify which vehicle you need to get into is by hitting M. That will bring you into your map and allow you to see this truck is my green truck. Now, the other way to tell your logistics truck from your transport truck, logistics truck will have supplies in the back. So you'll have all these crates and whatnot in the back versus your transport truck will not have any crates in the back. Same thing when you go to different factions. A little technical, it will be piled to the brim with a whole bunch of barrels and supplies versus the transport truck has no supplies in it whatsoever. For this, we're gonna grab this quick lodgy. To get into a vehicle, you're gonna hold down F. We'll show you a little circle that will allow you to get into your vehicle. If you are driving, you'll have an engine icon on your screen. You can hold down E, we'll start the vehicle. And then hold down E again to turn off the vehicle. And similarly, hold down F will remove you from the vehicle. If the vehicle has supplies on it, you can also reload using the F key. So you hold down F, move your mouse outside of the middle circle, and you can resupply off the vehicle. At the beginning of each match, because your squad leads are trying to communicate with other squad leads to coordinate where you're going and what you're doing on each map, it's important not to talk in squad comms or in local comms because the squad leads are going to have a ton of voices going on and trying to communicate with other squad leads over squad lead chat. So any extra comms will just cause more confusion and delay from getting the game started. So when in a Logi truck and going to an objective, we're going to be setting down a FOB, forward operating base, and then setting down a HAB for mobile spawn. When, need, when doing that, your squad lead is going to need at least two additional people with him to set down a radio and then one person to stay in the truck and drop down supplies. We're going to simulate that now. Go on me for radio. I'll stay in the truck for supplies. Drop Perfect. Space. So now Megatron is able to drop supplies in the Logi truck, and you can see in the right top left hand corner of the screen we're gaining supply supplies in the fob. And now Dublin, our squad leader, is able to place down a hab. This will allow all of our team to spawn here. <clears throat> and then he's placed down a dig marker to indicate where he wants us to dig. If for some reason you don't see where he placed down the hab at, or what location we need to go for this. And you'll see that on your compass. This emplacement will allow additional people to spawn in. And then we've got a handful of other emplacements that we'll cover later. Quickly demonstrate with the Logi truck what it requires to be able to drop and remove supplies. So if you're the person staying behind in the Logi truck, always a good idea to call out by name who's staying in the Logi truck. So if I'm going to stay behind and stay with the truck, I'll call out Cajun's gonna stay with the truck. That way if I'm not looking at that way if I'm not looking at the comms, I don't see what name popped up necessarily, but I at least know who's staying and my other squad mates know who's staying and they can leave the truck. You push one to select the construction supplies, right click to pick up supplies, and left click to drop supplies. And that's holding right click or left click. Two will switch to ammo and same thing. Hold down right click to pick them up, and you hold down left click to drop them. When we return to main base, you'll stop at an ammo resupply point to pick up more supplies by holding down right click, and then you drive to your fob to drop down more supplies holding down left click. Now, with the fob on the map, you'll see this blue circle we have. I can drop supplies to the radio anywhere within this blue circle, and we can build anything within this blue circle. One of the key elements when you're ready to spawn in after you've died or just joined the game is making sure you're spawning with your squad. So as you can see, we currently have three different places to spawn in, like we talked about before. We have the HAB, our Rally, and Main Base. Our squad is all currently with our HAB or next to our Rally, so we want to make sure we spawn in here. If we had a HAB set up at another cap point, we wouldn't want to spawn there unless in 
specifically instructed to by our squad leader. Before spawning at main and grabbing a vehicle, always, always ask your squad leader if it's okay to grab a vehicle from main or spawn at main to grab something else. It's key that you ask beforehand so that you're not spawning at main. Your squad lead does not want you having a vehicle, for instance. Therefore, you would have to either do a respawn or you're just stuck at main and you're walking. If you find yourself in the middle of nowhere, not near your squad or not near any infantry, or you're glitched into something, into a rock, into a wall, a uh, medic has respawned you and you popped up into a ceiling that you can no longer get out of, one way to respawn is pushing the tilde key. That key is the one that is left of the number one and above your tab key. It will open up the console. When you're in the console, you can type respawn, and that will instantly kill you and bring you back to your deployment menu, and there you can select where to spawn in. This will give you a higher respawn timer because you did a suicide. It will also give you a higher respawn timer if you team kill somebody. So you can see I have 90 seconds to respawn remaining on the fob now. Click to confirm. Well, now we just have to wait. Within your map, you're going to see different icons show up on the map. Your squad leader is able to place multiple icons for different, uh, different movements. So here you'll see all of the different infantry movements. So we've got just basic infantry, machine gunner, a lat, sniper, and then we have heavy anti-tank. Let me delete these guys, sorry. And we've got heavy anti-tank, so it's a slightly different icon than the lap. Next, we'll show all of the different vehicle icons. So from here, we've got just basic vehicle, a light armored or light vehicle, so that may be an MRAP or a Dishkateki. We have a lat. Vehicle, so that's a SPG techie. I also have transport vehicle, which will look a lot similar to if you just click on the vehicle icon. Full size transport truck, logistics truck. Again, the logistics truck has the ammo striped on the back or a motorbike. And then we have vehicle, <clears throat> so we have the wheeled APC, the wheeled IFV, usually the 30 mic. Tracked APC, uh, usually referred to as a shitbox. The tracked IFV, which is usually a Bradley or a, a warrior. Main battle tank. And then the anti-air artillery. <clears throat> we also have the FOB, so if we find an enemy radio. You have the little castle icon that represents the enemy fob location, the enemy hab, which will be their spawn point, an emplaced MG, the anti-tank, which is either a tow or a cornet missile, or an SPG, a uh, mounted SPG, and then their mortars. So these are the different enemy icons, and we have one more segment for just a mine. We can hit the X. So that will usually indicate either at a mine or we've located an enemy rally point that we need to go stop. That'll be usually placed with the X as well. Some of the other icons we can have on the map are going to be request. So I can do request fob creation. That'll show again where my inside and outside lines are. So my inside lines are everywhere I can build. The outside line means where another radio can be placed outside of this or this circle. Fire mission for mortars will be a little, little mortar icon there. I need reinforcements. I need a pickup. So, hey, come to this location and pick me up. Resupply the ammo or resupply construction. I will say in the 1500 hours I have in game, you will rarely see the last three. You might more often see the pickup location, but most of the time you're not going to see uh, the last two. Usually it's just going to be a request to somebody in your squad to go pick supplies up. And then we have orders. So these are within our squad. We've got move marker. I want you to move to that location, attack that location, defend this location, a build marker like we talked about earlier with fob creation, and then also an observe marker. Observe markers are usually used. I've seen infantry movement this direction. We're not really sure exactly, so we're not going to place down 
a red marker, but we're going to place, hey, everybody in my squad needs to look this direction to find out infantry movement. As we can see with our stuff that we've built, we've got our Logi truck, our tank, we've got a build marker, our hab location, our fob radio, which is a little hard to see because there's a lot going on here. This little wrench and screwdriver is the ammo repair or armor repair station. So this is a rep station. And then we have mounted machine guns and then the mortars. We're talking about call outs. We want to be very clear about our audience. So as we have set up, we have a few people in a line spread out relatively far. And then we also have our main battle tank hanging out with us as well. So if we've got troop movements out this way, you can see my compass says 096097, somewhere around that direction. We want to be careful not to call out mills and squad chat. So if I call out enemies 097, Sparks here, who is the one closest to me, will be able to probably tell exactly where I'm talking about. But as we get towards our main battle tank and then Omegatron down there, what they're looking at are two very different things. So they're going to be looking in skewed locations. One of the other things is we'll spread out around a point. You're going to have people in various locations. So your compass mills are not going to be very accurate. When we're doing major callouts so within our squad, we want to call out via cardinal direction. So I'm going to say we're at Akeem Lower. Enemies east Akeem Lower across the street. So pretty good indication that these enemies are over here. It's across this major street that's on our east. And so everybody has an idea that we need to look in the east direction. Very similarly, if we've got contacts in the river, we can say contacts that came lower north across the river. We know that they're going to be over here across this river. Now, I can use local chat because, again, Omegatron probably can't hear me way out over there, but Sparks can. So if I say, hey, enemies 099, the contacts that are in my local chat area we'll be able to see that 099 is roughly the same location we should all be looking at, and that reference point should be pretty close to accurate. Your best callouts will always be a POI. So you find a major POI that you want to call out. Cap points are a big one, roads are a big one, and rivers are a big one. This way, everybody on your team knows exactly what you're looking at and where you're looking for callouts and what they are. So the other important thing will be infantry, East, main battle tank, east or tank east, um, armor east is fine as well. Or, hey, Lodgy spotted southeast of Akeem, headed east to west. Another really good call out. One of the last things we want to go over is listening to your squad leader. You've chosen to be part of this squad, you've chosen to follow this squad leader. So go ahead and follow that squad leader. Normally they have a plan, not always, but they normally have a plan and will ask you to do one or two things. It may sound ridiculous, may sound stupid, but usually they're communicating with other squad leads and they may not have time to fully explain why they want you to take a logi to three cap points ahead. But there's generally a plan. So one of the big things is just grab that logi, go make that run, go supply you know, the next squad or, or whatever it is that they're asking you to do. They may get you killed. You may die a few times. Also, some squad leads are just going to be really bad at this and are going to kind of be jerks. You will eventually start to learn which squad leads you want to be part of the squad and which squad leads you just want to avoid. But if the squad leads being a jerk, you can simply leave the squad. But again, remember, you've chosen to be part of that squad, so it's... It's the right thing to do to just listen to what they've got to say. We've covered a lot today. I hope you found this video informative and useful. Please keep an eye out for more videos to come. And if you'd like to join us and play some squad, see the link in the description for our Discord. This has been Cajun CEO from Bismarck Gaming along with a few others. Thank you for watching. Have a great evening.